Welcome to my vlog, Humans for Humanity, where I put my heart and soul into restoring authentic connections between human beings and the inner connection of human beings with themselves. I'm your host, Ernest Assen, and this is a new episode. Hello there and welcome to my very first vlog. In this first episode, I'm going to talk about um, how information control the people. Those who control information control the people. And lately I've been wondering about the question, how do we know what we know and how do we know if that is true? And you can go really deep into the rabbit hole to figure out what is true and what is not true or how do we really know that what we know what we think we know is true and i want to start with a quote from g massey he was an egyptologist not sure who he is but it's a good quote they must find it difficult those who have taken authority as the truth rather than the truth as the authority so I'm going to talk about information today because information is not the same as facts or truth. Information means that you, your mind is in formation and that's different than maybe most people think about it, but I've, I've come to think about it that information is helping me form an opinion and you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to form an opinion about something and, and or an idea, right? So you, th you have to think for yourself, you, you play with the information, you bounce it off in your head, you um, kind of put it in context, you think about it, whether it feels right to you, um, does, it, does the new information that you get, is that something that rings true to you like does it match up with your values is it in you know the integrity with with who you are and what you believe all these things are important and also when you bounce it off with other people you want to know how other people think about this and what have other scientists for example when you're looking at science well what other information is out there and so you just don't settle with what's in front of you you remain curious and this is how you form an opinion you form an idea and even though science sounds like well it's just the facts that's not true science is constant constantly criticized and and valued and revalued and and researched so there is no consensus when it comes to science it's that's, that's not science. Science is the opposite of consensus. It's critical thinking. It's reevaluating. So that's what I think about information. It helps to have lots of different information so that you can, because your brain, your mind is in formation. And this is how you form an opinion. And I, I, the way I see it, there's an absolute truth. And then there is relative truth. But there isn't really very much that we can call absolute truth, is there? Um, I think maybe, maybe math. <laughs> um, what what is irrefutable? Gravity, um, mathematics, um, which maybe another kind of science or God is is God irrefutable? Most of the time, we're dealing with relative truth, and that is just a perspective. Um, facts to the best of our knowledge of what we think we know now, which can change. It could be an agree agreement or consensus or a relative. That's probably what we, we think is truth is, is that, not absolute truth. Even something as concrete as, as anatomy, for example, and I'm a retired physiotherapist, so anatomy was something that I learned. And you think, well, once you know the anatomy, you know it all. No, it's, it's even in this field of anatomy, new things have been discovered. And I'll show you, I'll show you a <laughs> link that is, uh, just give me a second here, I'll share my screen. So, 
So here it is. New ligament found in human knee, which was in 2013. And even though humans have been studying their bodies for centuries, piecing it together, um, these researchers found another ligament in the knee. And it says here, a French surgeon first postulated its existence in 1879, but it had never been proven and fully described until now, said Stephen Klass, Klass, an orthopedic surgeon and study co-author at the University of Leuven in Belgium. So there you have it, no absolute truth. So it is crucial, in my humble opinion, <laughs> for us humans, to never confuse a relative truth with an absolute truth. And confusing the two is actually dangerous because it has the potential to cause havoc in the world, confusion, um, polarity, war, fights, division, hatred. And when we call other people that have a different viewpoint or a different opinion or think the other science is, is the real evidence and they call those people the enemy then because they hold a different truth then we have a problem because that is what fuels conflicts and i think that's a really big thing right now is we need to look at what are those conflicts it is because of different ideologies different beliefs different um different truths that we hold on to without even giving any thought to looking into what is the other person, what to be curious, to be curious about other things that other truths of the other people. For example, a really good example, just, um, just recently um, I was talking to somebody who was making the anti-maskers the enemy, for example. And I, I don't, I don't go there because well, you don't know what, maybe these people know something that you don't know. So you don't call anybody the enemy and you do not just make them wrong and you right because you don't know, you really don't. So the truth, the truth is complicated and it's complicated because one, we use our mind to interpret information and the mind is very vulnerable to bias. And secondly, the mind is constantly under the influence or manipulated through other people, media, social media. And no, Google is not a neutral search engine. And I'll show you in a, in a minute wh what I mean by that. So humans, they gravitate, like the example of the first one, we use our mind to interpret information and we're biased. And there's been a ton of psychological in, like research by psychologists, and here's an article in the Psychology Today, and I will share the link. Google, all, all the links are gonna be in the description box for you to check it out for yourself, by the way. This one is that you end up believing what you want to believe. See, that's really interesting. So your bias, you bias your interpretation of evidence toward what you desire. So what you want to be true, you're going to be likely to believe the evidence. And if the conclusion here says that, that means that people ultimately come to believe that the weight of evidence supports the position that they already wanted to believe was true. And they will believe this without recognizing that their own desires influenced the evaluation of the evidence. So that's good to know. You know the reason I'm talking about this with you or that I'm showing this is that we need to be aware of this, that when we, when we believe that something, that this is the evidence and I read about it and I know about it because I saw this research, we want to believe what we want to, we believe what we want to believe. And we're not aware of it. Is that that's what it says here? So, okay. 
And another interesting, also the psychology today, is uh, what is confirmation bias. And it just is that people are prone to believe what they want to believe. And it occurs from the direct influence of desires, desire on beliefs. When people would like a certain idea or concept to be true, they end up believing it to be true. They're motivated by wishful thinking. This error leads the individual to stop gathering information when the evidence gathered so far confirms the views or prejudice that one like to be true. Very important to remember that when the next time you call somebody an idiot. <laughs> it's probably not that. It's probably because you already think you know what is true, but you don't. Another important thing to realize is like, like confirmation bias is basically based on your desire for something to be true. So you, your emotions change the way you view the world and they change your perception. Like desire changes your perception of what you want to be true. Emotions create a filter and you will interpret information under the influence of that filter, of the emotion that, um, that you experience. So that's good to know. Like if you're, if you're afraid, you're going, your brain is automatically going to look for things that are threatening. It, it colors your perception. It, it, it's like your brain is a search engine. So it will look for evidence of things that are dangerous because you are in fear. So it will look for other things that to be afraid of. It's really mind boggling when you come to think of it. So the second point I mentioned why um, the truth is complicated. So the first is because we interpret information, our mind is vulnerable to bias. The second one is we're always under the influence or even manipulated through other people, um, the media, social media. And when you think you're going to look up some information in a neutral, just, just Google it. Google isn't neutral and I'll show you an article on that too. So the first thing, you know, the, the mind is under the influence. Humans tend to conform to a standard in group situations. And this is also very interesting. Uh, I will show you, it's called the ASH conformity study. And what that study did was it's, um, the results of this study are important when we study social interactions among individuals in the groups. This study is a famous example of the temptation that many of us experience to conform to a standard during group situations. And it showed that people often care more about the same being the same as others than they do about being right. And it could be so strong that that desire to be the same that even if something is obviously wrong and you see it's wrong and everybody says no this piece is longer than the other and i think uh yeah this wasn't a research which which line is the longest um the actors there were a whole bunch of actors and only one um poor victim <laughs> So the tricky part of the study was that in each group, only one person was a true participant and the others were actors with a script. And most of the actors were instructed to give the wrong answer. Strangely, the only true participant always agreed with the majority, even though they knew they were giving the wrong answer. So that's how strong that is. So Noam Chomsky, he said, um, how, it is, how it is we have so much information but no so little and i'll share this article with you right here 10 strategies of media control according to noam chomsky so i'm not going to go through the whole article in detail um i'm just going to mention a few and i might spend a, a video on this article because it is so interesting and then i'll give some more examples so the first one i mentioned is distraction, you know, you watch television and you just kind of become numb and, and you're watching sometimes you even just um, mindlessly um, 
use your remote control and it's it's really mind numbing the other thing is that you get overloaded with information and that's um also another your, your brain gets very tired from all that you get overwhelmed the second strategy that um the media uses so this is the, the 10 strategies of media control right so according to this this guy who is by the way a uh, a, a thought leader and and um he's a highly respected intellectual in the world um so this is um in the new york times the new york times said he's the most important thinker of our current era and this is an older it's from 2018 just so you know, just a bit of background. The second one is a really important one and it's called problem, reaction, solution. Sometimes the powers that be purposely, purposefully neglect or at least don't really address certain realities. They make their citizens think it's a problem that needs an outside solution. And then they themselves put forth the solution. This is a very popular strategy for unpopular decisions. And we're living in one right now where the problem, a virus, is there. And there's a little bit more going on, but now, you know, the solution is the vaccine and it's not a very popular, maybe not a popular solution or masking or social distancing. These are solutions. Um, but what, what they're trying to do is, is the idea is to, to justify the solution. And that is what has been happening. If you watch a lot of TV, you've become desensitized. And, no, and you know the the new norm is is nothing it's it's just normal and and it's and it's not it's just not normal to wear masks and it's not normal to put masks on toddlers it's not yet our society is becoming more used to it and it's and it's everywhere it's everywhere on the radio on the television even when you're on the highway it's like wear your mask and social distance and don't travel it's that's manipulative, um, but you don't realize that that's what it is. Very closely related, the gradual strategy. The goal here is to get the public to allow things that they wouldn't normally accept by introducing them very gradually so that the people won't even notice. And so this is also something they, it's like they were moving the goalposts all the time. First, it was just flattened the curve, and then it was Let's do it a bit longer. And now the lockdowns are more and now they're doing curfews. It's now there's no mask, masks, two masks. It's gradual strategy. So this is a very interesting article that I would recommend reading. Uh, treat people like children. And of course, going the emotional route, um, instilling fear, in st stirring up the emotions, um, keeping the public in ignorance, not giving full information, just being vague and not clear, which I'm gonna do a, another video on that because I, that's really close to my heart. It has to do with informed consent. And if you, like as a physiotherapist, I was really aware that who am I to tell people what to do? So it was very important for me to give a lot of background, make sure they understood what I was saying and not saying that this is the only way, but let's try this and then we'll go from there really being respectful of um, the people's knowledge and making sure they knew as much as possible about what was going on with their back pain or their headaches. So keeping people ignorant is not a good thing. And it's, I, I think it's well, not human. You can't, it's disrespectful and <clears throat> maybe even criminal. So making the people, make, making people complacent reinforcing self-blame, knowing people better than they know themselves. Um, this is good for you, trust me. Um, and some people, they kind of like the idea that they don't have to think for themselves because they're afraid. And then it's it's nice to have somebody to tell you what to do. And, and 
So you believe that that will keep you safe. And a lot of people believe that, oh, in a few months, we will all be good to go again and everything will return to maybe a slightly different normal, but we can, you know, it'll be nice to be doing the things that we used to do. Um, don't count on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm not trying to be a, a, a Debbie Downer, a Debbie Downer, but um, I think it's time to be diligent and start being more critical and holding the authorities accountable for what they're doing and start asking critical questions. That's just my opinion. And of course, I'm not telling the truth. I'm telling my truth and it's relative. <laughs> okay, so I think the last two things that I wanted to share with you is about uh, Google. It's done by Breitbart Epstein. Google is the most powerful mind control engine ever created. Psychologist Dr. Robert Epstein argued that Google is the most powerful mind control engine ever created in an interview with Breitbart News tonight on Sirius XM. This is an article from October in 2018. He referred to an internal Google document published by the Breitbart News too, and I will also have that article in the description box because that's very interesting too. So what his research has shown, what my research has shown beyond any doubt is that the search engine is the most powerful mind control machine that's ever been invented in the history of humankind, he said. We are able to shift thinking and opinions and voting preferences and shift thinking about almost anything. We are producing enormous changes in people without them being aware that they are being manipulated. I will leave the link. You can read it for yourself. You can watch the video. There's a, an interview. The interview is right here. So you can listen to it yourself. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? If you didn't realize that little piece there, I'm sorry I shocked you because I'm sure you are. <laughs> so I'll just quickly show you the, the very last one here. It's called the good sensor. Leaked Google briefing admits abandonment of free speech for safety and civility. That sounds creepy. <laughs> so here it is, the, the good sensor. An internal company briefing produced by Google and leaked exclusively to Breitbart News argues that due to a variety of factors, including the election of President Trump, the American tradition of free speech on the internet is no longer viable. So this too is an interesting article and it's got some very interesting images and graphs and I highly recommend, my, recommend you read it for the obvious reason that I said it's good to have different information because if you hold on to what you think you already know, you are going to be blissfully ignorant of what else is going on. And ignorant, I mean that in, not in a negative way. Ignorant is just not knowing. And you can be willfully ignorant, which is not very good. Or you can start saying, hey, I don't know this. I need to know the other side of the story. And that's what I'll end this first vlog with and leave some material for another one because there's more to be said about this. So how successful the control that the media are, are influencing us with, um, how successful they are, it depends on you, the receiver, and your emotional state. Repetitive messages can be used to manipulate a psychological state wherein people are more susceptible to the deception. And there is no doubt in my mind that in the last year since the pandemic started that we experienced massive media control using multiple strategies to, uh, to control what the humans on this planet, and this is a global, a global effort because it's happening 
the exact same thing. This is what's so amazing. What's amazing to me is, is happening everywhere. They have the same narrative, the same phrases, the same ideologies. It's scary, to be honest. So they control that the whole planet and it makes people compliant, obedient. They keep them ignorant, complacent. And, um, and, and then, then, then we get desensitized to, so that the new normal feels like normal and, and, and acceptable, but it's not, it's not normal. Okay, I will leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you please would help get my words out to other people so that they can, maybe I'll provoke a little thinking and maybe I can help some people change their mind a little bit, or maybe they'll start looking into things. That's my intention is I want you to look for yourself. Don't just, don't just, um, Take my word for it, for it. Look things up yourself and keep an open mind. And with the idea that you do know that there is no right science and wrong science. There's only science and not having a debate is, is not the right thing. So thank you for watching and hopefully tune in for the next video. If you like my video, subscribe, share it, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.